大家好 I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王 If you've been watching my videos these last couple of years, you've probably noticed I rarely talk about anything I don't like in China. With so much anti-Chinese rhetoric these days, there's not much point in bringing up these often exaggerated points. But that doesn't mean I like everything here, not at all. And today I want to tell you not one, but two examples of things I honestly really don't like about China. That's right, haters who said I would never say anything bad about China, you were wrong yet again. Recently, there's been an uproar from Chinese citizens against Western companies. H&M and other clothing brands have made somewhat bold, sweeping geopolitical statements about China. The local government of Xinjiang, a province of China, has been repeatedly accused of mistreating its citizens in an effort to stamp out terrorism and extremism. If you want to know what I think about China's efforts there, watch my video from 2019, in which I spell out clearly how I feel. This video is not about that. Instead, I want to start by telling you a story. This story is completely true. Back in 2012, I was living in Dujiangyan, a suburb of Chengdu in the infamous Sichuan province. I was here on business. I had already traveled to dozens of countries, including in Asia, and had amassed a small fortune from being an early Bitcoin adopter, making sound investments and good old-fashioned hard work. I didn't know China in 2012, and I'm not sure I will ever truly know it. But certainly, I know more now than I did then. Anyway, I had all the same stereotypes about China and Chinese people that other foreigners had. I was not special or different. One thing I knew for sure was Chinese products were inferior. Not because companies paid for and accepted low-quality products. No, perhaps it was because Chinese people just sucked at making things. Certainly, they were much worse than Americans. Made in America was a sought-after tag. That meant quality. Made in China, garbage. I woke up in my company-provided apartment and took a shower. The water heater was a strange foreign design. It heated the water in real time. It was impossible to run out. I thought, weird. How come I've never seen one of those in America? This thing is way better than the huge, useless water tanks we use. My biases were challenged. It was a bit unsettling. The air conditioner, TV, router, appliances—pretty much everything was Chinese and strange to me. And it all worked pretty damn well. On another day, I went to wash my hands in the bathroom sink, only to find the hot water knob was broken. I felt a bit of mental comfort as my biases were reconfirmed. Damn piece of junk sink, typical Chinese made. I almost thought. While contemplating who to call about this inferior Chinese product, I looked down and noticed a nicely written logo, plainly visible. Right there on the sink, that very day, my biases were significantly impacted. Everything. Everything in this entire apartment was Chinese. The logo on the sink, however, I noticed for the first time. It said "American Standard." That's right. The only thing in my entire apartment that was broken was also the only thing that was American. This was just another anecdote, slowly scratching away at my stereotypes. As the years in China went on, that old stereotype was washed away. China has amazing products, quite a lot of which are better and cheaper than Western ones. That's the actual truth. But as that negative energy left my mind, the void created was being filled by a new negativity. There was something that really bothered me about China. One day, I happened to complain about it to a friend of mine in a supermarket. Why do you guys use Tide brand laundry detergent? I asked. What do you mean? They wondered. I said, Can't you make your own laundry detergent? I mean, why are you using a huge multinational American corporation soap when you could just make your own? The person, to my surprise, didn't even know Tide wasn't Chinese. And that's one thing I really don't like about China: Coca-Cola, Tide, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, Hooters, Walmart. On and on, it seems Western companies slowly creep into a market that frankly doesn't need them. And in the past, when I've tried to explain why I don't like this, Chinese people have often not understood the problem. Over time, I came to realize that the general Chinese population doesn't really understand there are real risks of letting huge corporations into your country. China is controlled by a government that has made many mistakes in the past, but I always maintain that the trajectory they are taking China in is by far the best for Chinese people. Year over year, decade over decade, the people of China's lives continue to improve, and it's not happening slowly either. But because of this, Chinese people sometimes have a hard time understanding how different it is in my country, the United States. In the United States, corporations have become so powerful that they now virtually control the government. 
Twitter banned the president of America's account, even though he was not allowed to block people because it was deemed an official outlet of government information. An enormous lobbying industry shapes policies that benefit corporations rather than the people of America. And some Chinese people have a really hard time imagining such a situation. The more Walmarts I see in China, the more I think about what life will be like if Walmart begins replacing all local supermarkets like it did in America. The more I see Procter & Gamble products in China, the more I worry about the breaking point. Will there be a time that major Western corporations control China's political bodies like they do in America? This is one thing I don't like about China. All the unnecessary foreign companies, they could threaten local companies. They could threaten stability and balance. I literally have had nightmares about China losing itself to the enticing promise of cultural abandonment in favor of corporate partnerships. Has anyone noticed that nearly every country in the European Union is indistinguishable from each other? I have. Thankfully, we don't seem to be close to this happening in China, but I'm reminded of this as recent events highlight another lopsided truth about geopolitics today. Remember when certain people in the NBA started making bold public statements about Chinese internal politics? When China retaliated by banning some NBA events, this was spun as China's trying to suppress free speech. This is the exact same line of logic that caused the Opium Wars, one of the most oppressive and destructive events in history. In a capitalistic country like the US, money is the ultimate goal. Opening the market in China is an enormous, often underappreciated endgame of the West. Because again, a lot of policy and pressure is created there from corporations themselves. They want more money, and there's a lot of money to be made by entering the Chinese market. Anytime a corporation offends the Chinese government and or the Chinese public, they have the right to react. But that reaction will invariably be redefined as an aggression by China. This is the game they play. The only thing that matters to some is opening the market of China at all costs. These companies do not care about you. They don't care about your lives. They don't care about your values or your culture. They don't even care about Western lives and culture. They only care about profit. That is what they are. Nothing a corporation says can ever be trusted or held as true. Nothing. And that brings us to the events of this week. H&M and various other companies have made political statements about China. And the Chinese people are annoyed. The Chinese government is annoyed. And we slowly sink lower in diplomacy. But how did we get here? Western corporations are used to life in the West. Corporations are treated as people. They can just say whatever they want, and if you don't like it, too bad. They can support political objectives via lobbying. And as we can see from dishonest companies like Google, they can get multi-decade monopolies completely unchecked by the flaccid government. The US government, meanwhile, actively funds and promotes various pseudo-government agencies deceptively called non-governmental organizations. When hundreds of thousands of dollars funnel into a small think tank to generate a report about how as a made-up example, Chinese rice is worse for you than American corn. Surprise! It turns out there's a very reputable study and report proving that fact. Big Tobacco used the same strategy for decades. Study after study, endless research, all proved beyond any reasonable doubt that smoking not only doesn't cause cancer, it's actually healthy. So corporations get government officials in their pockets. The government creates fake research outlets to support the corporate needs and uses their research to prove whatever is needed. Their findings are repeatedly reported, codified in Wikipedia and sympathetic news agencies. Before long, whatever the corporations wanted to appear true becomes true. Reality is created. Again, if we went back in time with these same outlets, we could find very well-cited proof on Wikipedia, the New York Times, and all over the place that smoking was totally, completely healthy. To believe otherwise would get you labeled a conspiracy theorist or science denier. This is one way misinformation becomes reality. The way out of this is to not allow corporations to make political statements, nor to support political candidates, nor to lobby the government. But in America, we've evolved the opposite way. Corporations are much more powerful today than they were when I was young. But no one anywhere should care about what Gillette thinks about gender equality, nor what Coca-Cola thinks about global climate change. Studies by think tanks backed by governments should be routinely dismissed if not reproduced elsewhere. They simply are not reliable. And that brings me to another thing I really don't like about China. Given the current far-right anti-communism and anti-Chinese sentiment found in so many shadow neocons in the Western governance, why allow any of these NGOs to operate here? Maybe there's some reason that I'm not aware of for these to exist, but either way, I don't like it. They are haters. That's two things I don't like about China. See? It's not perfect. 
When Chinese companies start pushing back against Western companies that make political statements, it's not China suppressing their rights. It's just literally the same thing I would expect any country to do. If a Chinese corporation in the U.S. starts making bold political statements against the U.S., I personally support boycotts or any other legal retaliation against that Chinese company. This is not a double standard. The secret to getting a strong presence in China is so simple. It's almost counterintuitive. If you're a dentist, fix teeth. If you're an English teacher, teach people how to say mop and broom. If you're a clothing brand, sell clothes. If you're a tire company, make tires. Waiting for more? That's it. That's the secret. Do what you came to do, nothing more and nothing less. Then you will succeed in China. But if you don't want to be in the Chinese market, keep trash talking about China. Keep beating your drum of superiority and virtue signals. Keep telling the world how wonderful you are and how bad China is. Keep trying to take Chinese money in the meantime. That's the quickest way out of China for good. Because while you, and in fact many Chinese, may not yet realize this, I already have. China makes amazing products, and they don't need your sweaters. They can make their own. Remember that the next time you decide to parrot corporate-funded, government-backed political messaging to the world. I don't care what Nike thinks about China. But I do care if Nike starts acting like a political agent. Because to me, that is a very dangerous sign. This is not about Xinjiang. This is not about politics. It's about companies stepping out of line to promote political messages against the country from which they desire profit. There's an old saying in the computer world. It goes like this. Fast, good, and cheap. Choose two. You can have your product made quickly, and it will be good, but that will be expensive. You can have a cheap product made quickly, but it won't be good. And so on. And that leads me to create another saying. Anti-Chinese rhetoric, corporate presence in China. Choose one. Until next time, thanks everybody. See ya.